Shantae and the Pirate's Curse. <laughs> I got this as a freebie from GOG. <laughs> you know, this game was initially released in October 2014 and is technically the third of the Shantae series. It was actually initially released on the 3DS and later came to stuff like Steam and GOG. Now, myself, I like to play games usually in order. So, playing this one, I had to try and find ways to play the others. I've lucked out or purchased the others or get a copy of the others. This game is, like I said, the third in the series. And uh, takes place after the events of the second game. In which Shantae has lost her genie, pa her ha her genie powers. Making her mere mortal. And uh, it seems that Scuttletown, where she is, uses her powers to protect, um, is under attack from Arrow Ammo Baron. Yeah, well, after kicking his butt, she finds out he's now owns the town. Let's just say the mayor is of uh, of uh, Scuttle Town is not the brightest. How he even resides in, I, if he, residing in the palace is just because, you know, part of the position, he's too dumb for it. Oh well, that's how it is. So, now Shantae is facing a punishment for attacking the town leader. Don't worry, the punishment will get repealed because the librarian of the in the palace talks sense to people. But as she is commiserating in this new fact, uh, she ends up getting captured by Risky Boots, her standout adversary throughout the whole series usually. Yeah, she, it, it, how she catches it, gets caught is like uh, she decides to try and relax be use of a nice hot bath. But she never owned a bathtub before. Yeah, it was a trap. It's so risky and then takes her to the lab of her uncle where he has a Tinkerbat club, but the Tinkerbat has changed. This is when we learn that due to the events from the prior game, it has left a weakening for, um, it has weakened the bond that held the Pirate Master at bay. I mean, they defeated the or, uh, these seven genies, one of which had to be her mother, uh, Shantae's mother. Uh, basically trapped the pirate master. Defeated him, sealed his grave. But now his dark magic is ebbing out. Most likely because Risky managed to rob Shantae of her powers. I'll learn more about that when I play Risky's Revenge. And so, and some of these powers have oozed out into certain Tinkerbats, making them Crackle, crackle Bats, or something like that. So, Shantae and Risky must now work together to find the five dens of evil, defeat the creatures there, capture the, uh, get pieces of the map, locating the pirate master's grave, or the next den of evil.
so she must now go to the islands and there is an order but you can go back and use the tools you gain along the way to advance find crackle bats there are 20 that you have to find and heart squids heart squids are like the pieces of heart in uh, Legend of Zelda you get four, take them to the squidsmith, and they'll give you an extra heart of life. And each heart is like four health points. You can also buy items to make your attack stronger. And perform special backup attacks. Now in each den of evil, you find something to help you on your way. Like uh, Risky's pistol, her boots, her pirate hat, her cannon, and a scimitar. And you have to use all these to help you progress in the game. I mean, the game is in a Metroidvania. And you have recurring characters that appear in previous games. Um, Shantae's friend Sky. Uh, the uh, resident goof-up mechanic, Bolo. The zombie who wants to be Shantae's friend Risky or not Risky Roddy Tops and if you're questioning these names it's all part of the humor in it but you know they have to go from island to island getting stuff returning uh, the first stop is uh, Spittle Island. There's no saliva island, I think. Uh, yeah, there's like a hot spring there that's dried up. Uh, yeah, it's actually uh, just giant beast that does the bleh. And so, you know, you got all that. Then we go through to. Spiderweb Island. Oh, God. Which has a section which Shantae must carry Roddy Tops to safety. And, and well, these zombies apparently still have this taste for brains. They're not uncivilized. So that's part of Roddy's problem is that while she likes Shantae as a friend, wants to have Shantae as a friend, there's that little bit of zombie nature that throws in the humor of, you know, eating brains and all that. But you have to rescue Roddy with a damn chase section. It's like, uh, you know, I swear I did that. I had to repeat certain things because you can't attack. You get hit once, you're done. And you have to restart. Carrying Roddy the whole time. Of course, getting all the way to the other side, uh, you also get the ability to then uh, traverse the two parts of the island without doing that. After that, you're off to Tanline Island, where you got a bunch of people who worship a princess. And if the princess goes out for thir even goes away for 30 minutes, it's like the princess is lost. Long live the new princess! They they captured, they captured, Shantae, Risky, Sky, and Roddy. And you all see them in like 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 the Princess Leia slave gear from Return of the Jedi.
And in order to do that, you have to sort of uh, open the door to the cat to the palace there, finding the code. And of course, getting across the desert with quicksand, which is dangerous, but you can at least survive it if but if you don't sink down too far. For which you find uh, a foe named uh, Squid Baron. And you actually run into him earlier, wanting to vacation, but he's lost his purpose in life. His purpose is to be a filler boss. I kid you not, that's his purpose. <laughs> then you're off to Boggy Island. Oh my god, that place is dark, and amongst which is the village of lost souls. And you have to find coins in order to enter the den of evil on that island. As well as you come around across this very this cheerful lost soul like girl, which has to be it has to be Roddy's soul. Which sort of allows Shantae to see Roddy in a, in a new light. Then you have, um, and also a helpful spirit there, which uh, the only thing I can speculate on is that the spirit is actually Shantae's father. The human half of her lineage. And of course, you eventually learn about how people knew, uh, you know, some people know a little bit about Shantae's past and her parents. And after all that, you go off to uh, Frostbite Island. Which Shantae's usual attire is way underdressed for that cold. And it seems that Ammo Baron's making a deal with Techno Baron on that spot. And once we have uh, that, you know, well, Bolo's making something which turns out to be a totally messed up targeting module. Which allows them to, while it was supposed to, quote, fire, Ammo Baron wanted to fire on the palace and wreck the palace. It ends up blowing a hole right where Techno Baron is standing, revealing the last den of evil. And once you get that, we go, it starts in on basically what could be best described as the end game. It's about this time that you want to make sure you get all your squid uh, heart squids and melt them down or not. Personally, I would say melt them down. Get as much health as you can. It's going to be a doozy of a battle. Especially with the fact that you have to with what comes next. You see, Shantae and Risky then head off to the grave of the pirate master. And before they can curb, you know, blow it up, the pirate master sort of bursts from the grave. We find out that Risky's signature outfit that she's been wearing is actually the skull of the pirate master. Now, you, if you have everything and you defeat all the crackle bats, this plays a part. Not having them all ch does change the ending of the game. 
You see, as uh, Shantae makes her way, after he gets away, taking Risky Boots with him, uh, Shantae basically takes the... Uh, Shantae heads to the top, goes to the palace, heads to the top of the now corrupted palace, which is a chore in and of itself. Each section is a tricky section. You have to work carefully. You have to do everything uh, very carefully. You cannot... Trust me, it took me the better part of an hour just to get through the first section. And you cannot save the game until you get to the very top before the final battle. And trust me, I do not want to, quote, rerun that ever again. Well, I'll probably have more skill this time if I ever run through it again. And once she gets back up there and does two of the rounds of battle of which he steals back all the items uh, what we end up dealing with is this Shantae doesn't well the pirate master, after two rounds, demands the dark magic Shantae has that she's been collecting from the defeated Cracklebats. Shantae is not about to quote, she'll do it as long as the pirate master releases Risky, which Risky thinks was dumb, but could have possibly anticipated. You see, all that dark magic being around Shantae has turned into light magic. And so Shantae now has her genie powers back. So she can really wail into the pirate master. Add to it that once we get through that, we have a part where Risky sort of takes charge of this new cannon and has it fire upon the palace, specifically at the Pirate Master. So a combination of Risky and Shantae basically defeat the Pirate Master, destroying his spirit and his curse forever. Risky is now free to do what she wants. She may never be a good guy, one of the good guys, but she now has respect for Shantae. In fact, as we play out the ending, with Shantae at her full powers back, she actually grants a wish, basically returning Sequin Town back to the mayor and its former glory. Basically, you know, chasing Ammo Baron off. There's then a scene where Risky and Shantae talk on the island where the grave is. Risky now has a respect for Shantae. She'll never be one of the good guys, as she said. And she now has a respect for Shantae. And Risky even says, you know, I knew your mother. You know, because she was one of the genies. You're a lot like her. Just a bit more annoying. <laughs> And then Risky, of course, leaves. And then we're all set for adventure number four. 
which I picked up. I'll probably tackle that at some point. At first, it'll be playing through the first two games. This was a fun game. I enjoyed it. To come into the series in the middle is one thing. I mean, I never got the first game. Uh, it was towards the end of the Game Boy Color's life cycle. So I never really got into it. I was also just really getting serious in a relationship. And Shantae was not necessarily one of those things. And then second and third game, I think, were DS exclusives. Own, digital only. But now I'm glad I've gotten a chance to play this year, at least one game in series at this point. And I can't wait to play more. And that's all I have to say about Shantae and the Pirate's Curse. I hope you've listened to me, enjoyed me talking about this, and uh, check, get the game for yourself. You can find it on GOG, you can find it on Steam, uh, and I'll have links in the description. I always put links in the description, I just never mentioned it before. <laughs> and until next retrospective, take care, have fun, and check out all the videos I have up on the channel. Bye all.